What is going on, everybody? Welcome into another edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand Up here on this gorgeous Friday, January 6, 2023. As always, I'm your humble correspondent, Michael Tanner, coming to you from an undisclosed location here in Dallas, Texas, joined by the executive producer of the show, the purveyor of the show, the director and publisher of the world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com, Stuart Turley. My man, how are we doing today? It's Friday. It's a beautiful day. That, yay! It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood up here in Bear Country. And I'll tell you, we got a shit action-packed show today considering and, and, um you know there's a, a lot on the street right now or, or a lot going on right now considering uh, markets were down over 1.1 percentage points nasdaq was down 1.5 percentage points we'll dive in to what that all means um in the bigger round but but stew's got some insanely powerful <laughs> articles lined up for us i mean there's let me say because and, and when i say powerful i mean a nuclear power because oh, yeah. what we're the, what the first story we're gonna be talking about is will big plans for nuclear power work without russian uranium oh that sounds fun um <laughs> iran will then fly over to iran and talk about how they're they're eyeing more energy deals with turk medistan i'm pretty sure i pronounced that correctly um and then, you know, uh, you know, of course, Stu's got the most uh, upbeat articles, 12 events to watch for in 2023. <laughs> and to set the mood, number one is inflation returns. <laughs> number two is U.S. economy enters recession. So you already know how that story is going to go. Um, finally, we'll cover what Scott Sheffield said today on Power Lunch, specifically talking about once oil demand uh, picks up, things are going to get very tight. Love to hear Scott Sheffield, CEO of Pioneer National Resources. And then this one's just fun. A Stellantis deepens partnership with Archer to invest up to 150 million. It's basically an electric vertical takeoff landing craft E VTOL. Um, we actually have a little bit of um, you know some ex clients who have worked on this stuff, so it's very interesting to talk about um, what is going on in the EV VTOL space. You know, I'll I'll, I'll cover the beast the. Uh, EIA numbers, both on the crude oil side, where we actually saw a little build of the um, build in the crude uh, in the crude oil inventories, and we saw a huge 221 BCF inject or uh, withdrawal on the EIA U.S. working gas storage, which is above nice. expectations, and yet we still tumbled to 375. We will cover all that in a bag of chips. But first, guys, check us out on the world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com. I promise you it's the best place for all of your energy news. Stu does a great job of curating it and make sure all of the top stories that you need to know to take a holistic energy view there. Make it energynewsbeat.com. If you haven't checked out dashboard.energynewsbeat.com, it's our new, uh, newest offering via Energy Newsbeat, and it's, it's a one-stop shop for data and news. We're basically piping in all of the RSS feeds from Energy Newsbeat, and then we're starting to grab data from the EIA, like specifically crude oil storage numbers, which we'll cover, um, and trying to put it all there to eventually build out what is a home for natural, a home for all of this data and news combined into something that you can digest very quickly because, you know, that's what, that's what you want to do. You want to make decisions. You want to be able to make decisions faster. So the dashboard hopefully is designed for, and it makes doing this podcast really easy because I can just have it up and bing, bang, boom, all the numbers there. So it's solving two problems with one stone. Check it out. Dashboard.energynewsbeat.com. Has a lot of pleasantries, Stu. You got to start us off some more. What do you got? Uh, hey, let's start with some Russia. Yesterday, you did a great uh, imitation of either the Sopranos or Putin, and you, you're admitting it was Sopranos. I think it was Putin. But this article was, will big plans for nuclear power work without Russian uranium? Um, this is actually kind of funny. Here we are in the world's energy crisis, Sanctions are going on for oil and gas and natural uh, oil and gas. And now there's a big change to get to nuclear, but they need the Russian um, uh, uranium. Oh. At present, U.S. firms buy about half of their uranium from state-owned companies in Russia, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan. 
Uh, uh, Japan today announced that they're rethinking their nuclear plans and they're even going to be reopening them after, I believe it was the Fukushima uh, mm-hmm. nuclear plants over there that that had the earthquake and the disaster now they're even rethinking it but yep. they're going to have to buy from state-owned bad countries um here's where it gets a little dicey in december reports suggested that bill gates company terra power will face major delays in the development of its advanced reactor due to its ongoing reliance of russian uranium all right. <laughs> okay. of, of, of course, there, of course, there's a link there. Oh, yeah. OK, I'm not trusting the thing there. Nothing to see here. Um, moving right along. Hey, do you remember when I'm uh, using a Windows? So that should go in my favor, though. You what now? I'm using Windows. So don't shut me out. Oh, no, uh, I'm using Linux. I prefer Linux. OK, of course, of course, you're on Linux. Um, we're going to cruise around the corner here. Iran eyes more energy deals with Turkmenistan. Now, the reason I picked this story, Michael, is because uh, not because of Toby Keith's song uh, and he's going over the hill on a camel going off to Turkmenistan. I love that song. But energy trade between Iran and Turkmenistan has been growing dramatically. Tehran uh, Tehran cannot begin importing larger quantities of Turkmenistan natural gas until it pays off its outstanding $1.8 billion debt. (laughs) Oops. Um, So anyway, I got really tickled at this one. And one of the reasons I got tickled, Michael, is because Iran today put out a warrant for President Trump's arrest. (laughs) (laughs) Of course they did. Anyway, I I, you think we'll extradite him. I don't know, but I know the Democrats probably not. Yeah, the Democrats will throw him right under that one. Okay, it's 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 again. I think. You're starting to see more. I mean, there was always international trade, but I think you're seeing a lot more of these little mini deals happen as of recently with kind of with with what's happened with Russia. I mean, we've seen four or five of these little deals pop up really since this um, Russian invasion. So I think, uh, you know, something's afoot here. There's kind of a reshuffling of the global supply and where it's coming. Uh, Exactly. And I think China and um, India. Uh, are like the uh, big oil companies. They're the big dogs and they're pulling off product by 27 year contract. Michael, have you ever heard of a 27 year contract? No. For natural gas? No, but I, it'd be nice. I'd, be, I'd love to be on a 27 year contract guaranteed. All right. All right. We'll, uh, we're going to 12 events to watch for 2023. Okay. Um, I'm going to fly through these because we've been talking about them and we don't want to be well, I already. I already told everybody the first two inflation right. returns. The U S economy enters a recession that sets yeah. the tone for the rest of them. Okay. Number three, coming around the corner, European energy crisis worsens just when you thought it was bad. <laughs> Europe's now getting screwed. Uh, yeah. You know, good luck. Uh, A cold shower once every five weeks. Okay. Um, While having represented these misjudgments, the path to recovery will take years, not months. In the meantime, supply shortages will continue to plague these economies. It it took them 10, 15 years to get there. You're not going to get out of it in a summer with LNG floating terminals coming in. This is a year's problem, and it's going to cost the world money. Okay, next one, oil, crypto, and gold. Michael, what do you think this one's going to say? You should be in oil, crypto, or gold? I think so. Ding! And the prize goes to Michael. The dollar begins a long, slow, turbulent slide from 2022 highs as peak demand rapidly rising from interest rate uh, eases. It's also because of um, 
there's a gigantic move away from the dollar due to our current administration's uh, policies. And that's going to cripple the United States for years. Oil, crypto, and gold. Okay, let's go to the next one here. You heard it here a second. Continued rise of nationalism. Resource I, nationalism. Resource nationalism, yes. Well, nationalism. Poland is a perfect example of that. Uh, I have to hand it to the Polish leaders. They are going through and saying, Poland first. And they're going to take care of the Polish folks. Um, continued rise of resource na nationalism is different from the standpoint that it is uh, more state-owned uh, product or um they're trying to just eliminate a lot of things. Unforgettable geopolitical lesson I'm reading here now of the pandemic area has just in time supply chain dependence on countries uh, that may or may not have other nations in interest. Supply chain is that just in time inventory was great for the few years that it was working, but people can't do that anymore. Yeah, I know. Um, they okay. really can't. And, uh, yeah, no, it's, but, uh, yeah, it's very interesting. What's next on the list? Okay, traditional global alliances break, for, new ones form. We just mentioned that, Michael. Um, boy, I mean, the geopolitical world map is changing. And if you don't change with it, either you're going to lead the change or you're going to be, you know, which end of the dog are you? The U.S. dollar dominance continues to row. We've already covered that. The West, weary of cost of the Ukraine war, sues for peace. Don't get me started on this one. We need an audit. Uh, good Lord, we need an audit. Uh, okay. The domino effect of exposure. I'm not sure what that means. Eventually, the evidence over test trials. Who cares? Next one. Uh, China barks but doesn't bite at Taiwan. I thought this was pretty important, Michael, okay. because I, there's so many people out there that are saying China is going to invade uh, Taiwan. And you had Speaker Pelosi going out there and, you know, stirring up the poking the hornet's nest with a pole. And do you think that China would invade Taiwan? No, I don't think so, because. I, th I think that starts a chain of events that China knows. I think they do second order thinking. I don't think they're just a, a one order move type of people. I think they think two, three, four moves ahead. Like we always talk about. Yep. So I think they know that if they invade Taiwan, the United States, because of our reliance on the chips has no choice, but to, engage militarily and then that starts world war three and i don't think china necessarily wants that i don't think i mean that's my guess I, who knows with with this russian invasion you can never know you know well, you know we would have thought putin wasn't going to invade it then he did you know so i think it's very it's but that would be my guess is they don't I like the way you're going with this because i i do not want them to invade i think that would be a disaster but the uh, second and third uh, items are because they don't have to. All they have to do is wait a couple years for the U.S. to implode, thanks to our current leadership. Once we implode, they can walk in. And once they walk in, they can do anything they want. So I, I agree with you 300%, but I think it's because they know that they're outplaying the uh, chess match with a man that cannot play chess. Yeah. Okay. Second half rebound coming in economy and markets. Finally, some good news. Thank you. Yes. And this is going to go hand in hand. Hold this thought for a moment, Michael. Then when you go over to the Sheffield story, second half rebound in economy and markets. That to me was absolutely phenomenal news at the whole end of this thing. Then the last one, more of the same. Um, anyway, I thought it was a great article. Let's go yep. ahead. It was a great article. Um, it was a great article. And unfortunately, it had really, really good points. And then it's like me you get down to the bottom of it and you're like, okay, he's a cheerleader. Yay. Okay. Uh, oil demand picks up 
things are going to get very tight, says Pioneers uh, Sheffield. Now, I'll tell you, I like Brian Sullivan a lot. I think yes. that man is a rock star. Um, and I'd love to have him on the podcast. So I'll reach out to him tomorrow and see if he'll drop by. Um, Pioneer Resources, this interview, which was on CNBC, um, was really, really important in a lot of different ways. Um, it's worth a read. You can read it on the Energy News Beat. We have it embedded so it links to uh, CNBC's uh, site so they get credit. And uh, unbelievable. Brian does a great job. Scott uh, Sheffield does a great job. But Michael, yep. how did uh, T. Boone Pickens phrase it before? Is he always, uh, Brian went through it with a great thing with T. Boone Pickens. He's always said, I don't want to give you a prediction, but I think it's going to be 100 before it's 60. So what do you <laughs> think oil is going to be uh, according? Didn't you hear this? Um, I did not catch this. So I, oh, okay. I didn't happen to catch Sheffield today. Oh, man. I, I'll tell you, when Brian asked him that, he said, I think it's going to be 100 to 150 over the next seven years before it's 60. Now, think about that, Michael, as a prediction. That is one of the best predictions of where oil is going. And then Brian also kicked it back and he said, how come oil is at $74 right now? And and uh, Scott said, it shouldn't be. All of the things are pointing to the fact that there is not enough yep. oil. He said that you're going to see higher prices at the second half of uh, the year as the economy kicks back in. And then he also said, so that correlates with the other story. I know that yep. Scott didn't ask the other author for that, but that is a two-tail article saying that there's some headwind for those things. So uh, I love Scott Sheffield. Sheffield uh, I, I, he's one of the guys I'd love to have dinner with one day. So oh, it's 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 been great, and uh, I uh, I've I can't say I've quote unquote met the guy. I, but I was the producer on a podcast, um, Energy Thinks, which is now the real deep carbonization podcast with Tisha Schuler. Um, she's interviewed him, and I got to produce the episode. I didn't get to say anything, but I was there, um, and I got to press record. I got a selfie with him, but just he was on the TV behind me. Oh, how I mean, fun. I mean, I was just, my camera was off, but um, really cool. I mean, um, I'm a big fan of him. If he, what he's saying is true, yep. oh, that's... that's Great for the industry, bad for the consumer, but oh, yes. But he also said there was another key point in there, Michael, that I thought was just absolutely extremely noteworthy. And that was the fact that he said that uh, over the next several years, the uh, Permian is, is at 8 million barrels per day. They're going to drop down to 7 million barrels per day. Uh, and that uh, U.S. oil uh, production, the shale, even though it's growing in the Permian right now, will decrease over the next several years. Mm -hmm. And and so he did say it was still good for investors in oil and gas companies, but yep. there is a labor shortage and there's a part shortage. There absolutely is. Absolutely. is. You got anything else for us? I got that one bad dog story, man. I need to. Oh, yes. Torture. Yes. This is a great story. Stellantis deepens partnership with Archer to invest up to 150 million. And on Energy Newsbeat, there's a picture of one of the bad doggest looking things I've ever seen. It's got the uh, um, uh, propellers very much like the uh, Bell uh, Osprey that I, I really want one of those too, Michael. But when you take a look at this thing, it's an electric taxi and it's a cross between a uh, uh, Osprey and the Batmobile. It is cool. And uh, now it is electric. And I think it's pretty funny from one standpoint. Um let me think of here. And okay, so oh, uh, the E VTOL, uh, they need to build at least eight production representative prototypes in its midnight in uh, 2023 and 24. Here's it manufactured, anyway, about that. 
the amount of power this thing is going to need in order to charge it, this is an EV or a Tesla problem on steroids. If your energy and your grid is providing you with dirty coal, this is not a carbon-free airplane. No, I mean, it's it's not, um, but I mean, I still it's still cool. It is. I want one, and I'm all for it. If we can fix the grid and we can fix everything else, I want one, and I love me some EV. I Company love Jet, baby. Company uh, Jet. Company Jet. We need one. All right, back to you for finance. Yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty somber over here, if only because <laughs> overall markets dropped 1.1 1. 1, 1 tenth percentage points. Um, that's on the SPY. NASDAQ fell about 1.5 percentage points. A lot of that's got to do with the pending jobs report tomorrow that is, it looks to be mixed signals. Economists um, expect the, U, the U.S. economy to add. So the jobs report that came out, Stu, it, you know, private payrolls in the overall markets, 235,000 for the whole month. That was well ahead of the 150,000 uh, estimate. And we're still losing value, which is pretty crazy. So job market same, seems to be strong. So, you know, it's very interesting where things sort of go from here. Uh, futures have turned a little bit positive um, here in this uh, after hours. Um, but when we look at crude oil, we're trading about 7407. Um, here's time stands on on the fifth, we're at about 637. So, uh, you know, I think, again, the biggest thing that happened in crude oil is the the build of crude oil stocks. Um, last weekend we were, or last week we were at 418 million point nine this week, we clock in at 420.6. So a build of about 2 million barrels. Um, so that doesn't really help markets. Uh, markets actually, uh, uh, saw a little bit of a bullish trend and then pulled back a little bit. And again, we're trading very similar uh, to where the market opened at about $74. Um, again, that was number, that number courtesy of dashboard.energynewsbeat.com. <laughs> Check it out. Um, on the natural gas side, you know, prices are about 375 right now, Stu, but we saw a 222 BCF draw from natural gas storage. Again, this is according to the EIA's lower 48 working gas storage numbers that drop every Thursday. We saw both crude and natural gas drop today because of the short weekend, but usually it's a Wednesday, Thursday split. Analysts were expecting somewhere between 153 to 269. So pretty on the heavier side. And again, it didn't do much to move uh, markets. We still, we still see a decline in, in, in gas prices. It has a lot to do with just you know, the fundamentals have really shifted, Stu. People are much more bearish on the outlook on natural gas production versus, you know, all of the other factors that are surrounding it. So, you know, there's been a there's been a real hesitant market shift and it's it's not really good as we move forward. So um, I think there's a lot of people stuck in natural gas um, purgatory right now. They've got you know, it's going to be very interesting to see how the natural gas rig count number um, that comes out here um, very quickly on the drilling productivity report tomorrow, Stu. It's going to be very interesting to see what rigs yeah. are doing, and especially gas rigs. So that's sort of my one big thing. If I had anything to let you guys go is be watching for natural gas rig counts. They are going to be falling like wildfire. Man, and I don't understand why. Uh, we finally had Michael where uh, natural gas, I thought, was finally out of the cyclical uh, cycle, and it was based off of now world. We should be market. rising. I mean, it, that's the thing. Old convention is you build it, in the winter, so or you, your prices go up in the winter because we're drawing from storage, but it seems to be out of whack. I mean, you know, I, do you have a theory? I don't know. I don't know either because there's still a demand for the LNG going everywhere. I need a conspiracy, Stu. Where's the conspiracy in all of this? Well, let me tell you, there's a million jobs that the Biden administration fudged. Why don't we think, let's take the, let's check the EIA to see if they fudged the numbers for storage. We know they did this past year. Yeah, well, no, no, we don't know. We we know that, that there, was was there was an outage. There was an outage. There was an outage. There was an outage. Okay. Oh yeah. We don't know like, what happened during that outage, but um, yeah, I love thousand. a good EIA. I love a good EIA conspiracy. So I'm down to go down that rabbit hole. I mean, I'm sure they're screwing with the numbers. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, 
I mean, it's like Bill and Hillary selling uranium. You know, it's like good. <laughs> All right. All right, guys, with that lovely, <laughs> with that lovely thought, um, we're going to let you get out of here, get back to work or start your day. However, you're listening to us. Thank you for checking us out on the daily energy news beat stand up for Stuart Turley. I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you next week, folks.